Did you know? Officially, Dr. Mario is not a legitimate doctor. In an interview with Game Informer, Shigeru Miyamoto stated, There's really only one rule in terms of the things that Mario does. Generally, it's that he's more on the blue-collar side. He's hardworking and certainly much more physical in nature. So I think that a doctor is sort of an unexpected and perhaps unbelievable role for Mario. Perhaps the Dr. Mario you're thinking of was maybe, in some way, not necessarily legitimate. The gameplay of Dr. Mario was designed by Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of Metroid and the Game Boy. The game was created largely in response to the growing audience for puzzle games that Tetris ushered in after its enormous popularity. The music from Dr. Mario was composed by the same composer from the iconic NES version of Tetris, Hirokazu Tanaka. In addition to being a composer, Tanaka was also a programmer. Because of his combined skills, he didn't have to use real instruments to write the music beforehand like many other video game composers. He was able to program the music for Dr. Mario and Tetris directly into the machine. A rare glimpse into Hirokazu Tanaka's process was discovered by hobbyists at the Cutting Room Floor Wiki. This track is an unused song found buried in the data of an early Dr. Mario prototype. The music sounds experimental and incomplete, but it closely resembles the style of music in the final version. This prototype was one of several distinct builds of Dr. Mario that eventually found their way out of Nintendo's closely guarded custody. It's very rare for early first-party builds to leak publicly at all, but prototypes of the Japanese-developed Dr. Mario turned up randomly in the West decades after the final game released. The first widely known build was posted online from Norway in 2008, and was swiftly bought by a private collector for an undisclosed large sum of money. The prototype is called Virus, making no mention of Mario in the title at all. However, Dr. Mario can be seen during gameplay along with a nurse taking care of a sick dog. The animation for Mario is different than it is in the final version, and the viruses have different appearances as well. The second known prototype showed up in Texas. It was listed on eBay in 2010 and sold for $2,200. This version was nearly identical to the previous leaked prototype, with a few small changes to the text and date on the title screen. The next leaked prototype came from Georgia as part of an auction for a Nintendo PlayChoice 10 arcade unit. The PlayChoice 10 units were arcade machines that had 10 NES games with pay-to-play modes, but it was not typical for these arcade machines to house prototype games. This version likely came from Washington, where Nintendo of America used to own a few Chuck E. Cheese restaurants. In those restaurants, they would occasionally use the PlayChoice 10 units to test unreleased NES games on the public. This virus prototype has a unique title screen, along with an original bubbly-looking logo, and it appears to be very close to the final version. The menus look more like Dr. Mario, complete with checkered backgrounds. The nurse and dog are gone, place with close-ups of the redesigned virus characters. The red and blue viruses are identical to their counterparts in the final version, but the yellow virus appears to have been redesigned again for the final version. It's not clear why this change was made. Over the development of the Mario series, designers came up with many ideas for power-ups that never made it past the planning stages. In New Super Mario Bros. Wii, the developers considered a power-up based on chickens. The only publicly available concept art was shared in a discussion on NeoGAF with a collection of behind-the-scenes Nintendo images. It's not known what the chicken suit would have done, but many fans speculate that it was converted into the penguin suit, as both suits are based on flightless birds. A chicken suit is far from the strangest unfulfilled idea for a power-up. A centaur transformation was once considered for Super Mario Bros. 3, but was ultimately rejected in favor of the Tanuki suit. Super Mario Bros. 3 also apparently had planned a power-up based around Toad. An unused item-sized Toad sprite can be found hidden within the graphical data of the game near the other power-ups. It's not clear if the object was the Toad suit or just an item that summoned Toad, but it's worth noting that the role of Toad changed throughout the development of the game. Koopa Troopas and Hammer Brothers were originally going to be hosts for minigames instead of Toad. There isn't enough data to determine what the Toad object was intended to do, as nothing will happen when the item is reinserted into the game via hacking. Another power-up that was removed during development comes from Super Mario Galaxy 2. Nintendo had concept art for a Demon Mario suit. The design was a cute and harmless take on Japanese demons, otherwise known as Oni. The Oni Mario suit eventually became Cloud Mario, but it's interesting to see that the cloud summoning power-up has mythological origins. Updated music for the Ice Flower and Red Star power-ups can be found in the data for Galaxy 2, suggesting that they may have been planned to return from the first Galaxy game. Yeah. 
The character designed for Bowser gets its horns and muzzle from Oxen. When designing the villain for Super Mario Bros., Shigeru Miyamoto was inspired by the Ox King from the 1960 Japanese animated film Journey to the West, released in English-speaking territories as Alakazam the Great. The King of Koopas got the rest of his design from the Koopas themselves. Miyamoto stated, I've been drawing something completely incomprehensible, a turtle's body with an ox's head. Through our discussions, his appearance eventually came together, though. Since Bowser was in the turtle family together with the Koopa Troopas, we began to see similar lines between the two, so we copied those as faithfully as possible. In Super Mario Bros. 3, more turtle designs were added to the lineup, with seven different Bowser-like children ruling the different castles in each world. Contrary to popular belief, the Koopalings are not actually the offspring of Bowser. Miyamoto has said, Our current story is that the seven Koopalings are not Bowser's children. Bowser's only child is Bowser Jr., and we don't know who the mother is. Another fact about the Koopalings comes from the animated adaptation of Super Mario Bros. 3 from North America. The pre-production phase of the series predates the final naming convention of the Koopalings from the games. As a result, the Koopalings have entirely different names in the cartoon. The names are Bully, Big Mouth, Kooky, Cheatsy, Hip, Hop, and Cootie Pie. Don't forget to subscribe and click on this annotation to find out more about the Super Mario Bros. animated series and the Super Mario Bros. movie over at Did You Know Movies, our new show all about movies and TV. And while you're at it, why not check out my video on the top 10 weirdest video game commercials? Because that would be really cool of you. Please do it. Thank you so much, and have a good day! Bye!